How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at Marvel's Alien. This is issue number 10. This is the second plot arc, Revival, and this is chapter 4 of that plot arc. And I guess I should go ahead and start out the video explaining why this one came out kind of late. Uh, the issue itself wasn't delayed, but this book has been plagued by delays, and in turn I kind of forgot it was coming out. And by the time I remembered, uh, it had been a few weeks uh, since the book had been released, and I figured, you know what, it's been a while anyway, I might as well just wait till issue number 11 comes out and review them both back to back. And then, of course, 11 was delayed by a few weeks. Uh, but anyway, that's why I have this variant covers, because by the time I went to buy it, all the A covers had been uh, purchased and I was left with a B. Uh, but that being said, um, if you're watching this video, shortly after this video comes out, issue number 11's video should be out and you can watch that too. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at the variant cover. You know, I try to collect A covers, but this is a pretty sweet variant cover here. It's got the alien going down the mine shaft, and he's just kind of walking, you know, a very, just a, uh, a very standard pose, but the way it does the color and the texture and his little teeth there with the, the spit coming out of it, a very simple cover, but a very nice cover, and I really do like this one, so yeah, not a not upset about the the variant at all uh, but anyway with this issue it, this uh, this plot arc is starting to feel a little bit like the alien version of the walking dead and I mean that in a good way you see a group of small a small group of survivors stuck on a planet and trying to survive against a massive alien onslaught, you know, trying to make it from, you know, one way station to another, trying to survive and losing members horrifically along the way. It's pretty cool, and I won't spoil uh, what they look like, but we do get to see a new breed of alien in this issue. That's pretty cool. We get a very creepy mind sequence in this issue. That's pretty cool, and we get, you know, the classic you know, Walking Dead style survival debates, I think we should do this or that. And overall, another really great chapter, really glad to have read it. And without further ado, let's jump into the double page credit spread. I really do like how they do the credits in this book. They've been giving it a double page spread every issue, and overall, it looks pretty nice. Uh, we get Alien, really big and wide. And then Revival, four of six, written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, same writer the whole series, and Salvador La Roca as the artist, same artist the whole series. And then up here we get Alien, Aliens, Chapter 1, and then this is a previously on for Chapter 2. And then over here we always get a schematic, and here it is Ambrose, and we see, you know, he's a synthetic, part of his... Uh, Description has been censored. Function, intelligence agent and close social interaction. But we see like part of that's missing. But yeah, they uh, they killed him and then they had a tech guy that kind of brought him back to life. But he's just like half a head now. A really interesting character and a really interesting concept. You know, you do an alien book, you have to do synthetics. And this is... Uh, a pretty interesting way they've done the synthetic here but anyway without further ado let's dive into the story a little bit now I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers but I do want to analyze the plot a little more and talk to you guys about what happens in this issue I'll just be avoiding the end bits anyway we open up and we see a native resident of this planet this is the creature called the tuber, and they hunt it and debate whether they should use it for food. I always like seeing new alien species in, in this universe, you know. And they talk about how it's supposed to live in the mines. It's a cave dweller, but uh, something has driven it out of the mines, and it doesn't survive well above the surface. Any guesses to what did that? Um, but, 
uh, they talk about Ambrose, and Jane says, there was never an Ambrose, it was just circuits and wires, and I threw him away weeks ago, but of course she's lying, and also weeks ago, so they've been on the trek for quite a while, uh, but anyway, uh, she's talking to Ambrose, and, you know, figuring out where exactly they are, kind of using him as a guidance system, and he, of course, is talking about religion, and how mother needs to test you before she lets you into her arms. And they talk about a story of testing from their uh, religion called the Minds of Jonah. And then that's where they get to their actual minds on this planet. Which I'm guessing they named the Minds of Jonah. But if that story in your, in your book is about testing and horrible things happening, I don't know if you'd really want to name your minds that. Uh, but anyway... We get to find out a few interesting things uh, once they get here. Uh, for example, they explore the place, and it looks like the aliens have raided this place too, and there's probably no survivors, and some very gloomy graffiti. And one of the people talks about a verse from the Book of Randall, and they say in this religion that you have to confess what you're afraid of, or in the afterlife it will haunt you. So... A kind of a really interesting revision of confessions there where you have to tell someone else what you're afraid of so that it gets it off your chest and this does lead to some interesting revelations for example this guy talked about in the not too distant future from us there was a blind Chinese philosopher who started his own religion and the religion got to be really big but when he died it got out that the government had created this guy. He wasn't really even blind. And they were using this fake religion to control people. And he's like, I fight against big government. I fight against big tech. But sometimes I wonder if I'm still secretly being controlled. And boy, there's something in that idea there. Really deep. And I do like that this book really cut into a... A social issue in a creative way you know uh, but yeah that's a really interesting page uh, but then they also find this abandoned little car there and they say it has most of a charge and they can go to another way station that hopefully wasn't all messed up and they can uh, they can hopefully escape however this one guy uh, he was hoping to meet a girl here someone who he never met in real life and was only talking to on the radios but says, she's probably alive, we looked everywhere, she's got to be in the mines, there's probably survivors in the mines, there's survivors from our place, why wouldn't there be survivors from the other one? And of course they tell him not to go, but he steals the guy's gun and says, you can't stop me, I have to save my girlfriend. And I would be like, you know, okay, that's... That's this guy running off to his doom, and boy, these mines are pretty creepy looking, you know. It is a, a bad place where you definitely you go in there, you feel like you're going to die. And personally, I would have been like, okay, that's a bad decision for him, but we're not going to get the whole group killed, right? Well, they of course decide to follow him. Uh, she tells everybody that Ambrose is still kind of alive and why Ambrose is talking he says uh, a few interesting things one that the pipes in the alien resin you can follow them back to the nest which I thought was a good bit of alien lore there hasn't been as much alien lore in this chapter as the last one this chapter is still really good but the last one had so much lore in it so I do like the idea of you can use the resin tubes to find the nest that is really interesting um, but he also mentions a few unusual markings and says, humans aren't the only species on this planet. There's also the tubers and the aliens genes will morph, you know, uh, that's why they, they're the name Xenomorph. Xeno literally translates to foreign or alien and morph literally means to change. So they'll take DNA from the host that they're inhabiting Plus, I like to assume that they have the DNA from their past host as well. 
Uh, so these tubers are going to produce different aliens, and that is a really cool idea. I mean, we still have some aliens that came out of just humans, so we are getting the regular aliens, but also the tuber aliens, and I really do like playing against their, uh, or playing with their genetic transformations. I think that's pretty cool, and it does lead to a pretty cool alien variation, which I always love my alien variations, and also we do get some deep, dark moments of death. They are going into the death mine, after all. It gets pretty dark after that. But anyway, I really love this chapter. Lots of cool stuff happens in it. Really, really one of those where you're like, feeling the safety of the group and everybody is being surrounded by aliens. I really did love it. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom where you can see me talk about more Alien comics. And that should be a playlist that has all the past nine issue reviews in it. So you can see me talking about all the past issues of this book as well. I also did a complete chapter one review and a review for the Aliens one shot. So you should be able to find all that in there. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.